Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. I welcome you to this course Advanced Thermodynamics and Combustions. In this class, we will start a new module that is module 6 Chemical Kinetics. The study of uh, chemical kinetics is very vital uh, for combustion analysis. So, basically when the reactants consisting of fuel and air reacts, they produce products. So, in between we are going to discuss what are the different possible reactions that are going to happen, so that we get a final products. The other aspect is that what parameters that governs, what uh, mathematical parameters which we can identify and that will clearly tell us in which directions the reaction should proceed. Such parameters uh, are like uh, rate coefficients we are going to introduce on this uh, parameter in this uh, module. Apart from that we are also going to discuss different reaction mechanisms. Uh, like uh, unimolecular reaction, bimolecular reaction, tertiary molecular reactions and so on. And these reactions are although uh, we see uh, the final equilibrium products, but in between the reactions lot of elementary reaction that happens and we normally are not aware of such reactions, because our interest lies only in the equilibrium products. So, all those aspects we are going to discuss. So, this module consists of following topics. In the first lecture that is today, we are going to discuss about the fundamentals of chemical reactions. In the next lecture, we will discuss about different reaction mechanisms. In the study of fundamental of chemical reactions that is lecture number 23, we will discuss some elementary topics of mass transfer, then we will discuss about global reactions and elementary reactions. These two reactions are very vital uh, to study what uh, study the parameters that governs the reaction mechanisms and such parameters are known as rate coefficients and equilibrium constants. In fact, the dominance of this parameter will decide whether the reaction will proceed in the forward directions or in the backward directions. So, let me start the first segment of uh, this today's lecture that is rudiments of heat mass transfer that is basically the fundamentals of mass transfer. Why this mass transfer is required? Because the study of chemical kinetics are mainly dealt with the uh, concentration gradients and these concentration gradients can be quantified by a law what is called as Fick's law of diffusions. And this Fick's law of diffusions is nothing but in general it uh, tells us how uh, the diffusion parameters play a vital role in transferring mass from one point to another in a gaseous medium. So, that we call is as a rudiments of mass transfer. So, the mechanism of uh, mass transfer is something similar to heat transfer, because uh, the driving potential for heat transfer is normally temperatures because heat flows from high temperature to low temperature. In same sense, uh, when you talk about mass transfer, the driving factor is the concentration gradient or change in the concentration. And through this change in the concentrations, when there is a transfer of mass, so those that method we call it as a diffusion. Now, to quantify this amount of mass that gets transferred, we require the fundamental law that is Fick's law of diffusions. 
So, this is all about the rudiments of mass transports which we are going to discuss. Uh, just to give emphasis the importance of mass transfer, uh, let me tell you uh, that in the combustion system, the reaction rates control the rate of combustion and subsequently detect the volume transformation and destruction. So, basically there are two aspects, one is the concentration aspect, other is the chemical kinetics aspects. Now, this chemical kinetics is governed through some fundamental parameters. Adding further, the chemical mechanisms have also importance to combustion where chemical processes can be coupled to thermodynamic models of reacting systems. Uh, so, uh, now if you want to study this mass transfer, so this basics of mass transfer is introduced with a molecular viewpoint and with and the fundamental law which is known as Fick's law of diffusions. Now, uh, the this is one aspect, other aspect when you deal with the chemical kinetics, when the fuel and oxidizer gives the combustion products, ideally we expect that the react the reaction should proceed in the forward directions. That means, fuel and oxidizer must react to produce to the combustion products, but what happens uh, and that we see as a end results. But in between when the fuel and oxidizer they form the combustion products, this does not happen in a uh, single go. So, there are sequential processes or sequential events in which the fuel and oxidizer uh, reacts. That means, there is a formation of intermediate species, intermediate molecules and these intermediate molecules can have the uh, other reactions which you are not seen in the global reactions but they can have either directions, either in the forward directions or reverse directions. But globally what you see that fuel and oxygen, oxygen when it mix, we, we get heat out of it and as a result we get the combustion product in the form of exhaust. Okay. Before you discussed all those aspects, uh, let me discuss about the Fick's law of diffusion. So, the word diffusion is defined as the mixing of particles and uh, that is liquids or gases when they move from one region, one region of higher concentration to other region of lower concentrations. So, this in our day to day life, this we can realize that when a perfume bottle, bottle is opened in a room, so its smell spreads everywhere in the room. So, basically what happens is that concentration in the vicinity of perfume bottle is higher and the concentration at other parts of the room is less. Uh, and by virtue of this concentration difference, there is a transfer of mass and this process is known as diffusion process. So, analogous to heat and momentum transfer, the mass also may be transferred and, the, and this diffusion process is a molecular phenomena. And we can, uh, in fact, we can enhance this diffusion process by the turbulent mechanisms or we can um, mixings. So, for example, in when a perfume bottle is opened and if there is a fan running in the room, then the chances of mass transfer or the spreading of mass transfer gets enhanced. So, this is accelerated mainly due to the turbulence uh, or mixing of uh, the molecular gases. And in fact, uh, many a times we this is modeled through the collision uh, processes. Normally, the molecular processes are slow, but basically this is similar analogous to heat and, heat and mass transfer, but this process is a very slow process and operate in a very small sprital scales, whereas turbulent transport properties, they are related with respect to velocity and, and the size of the system. The mass transfer rate law for non-reacting gases is generally governed by the Fick's law of diffusion. So, mathematically how do you uh, quantify this Fick's law of diffusion? So, consider a non-reacting gas mixtures that comprises of at least two molecules 
molecular species A and B. So, basically when a when you say diffusion process we try to say that rate at which one species diffuses in the other. Uh, so, for example, perfume bottle is opened in a room and before it is opened air is the content is can be considered as one of the gas, but when the perfume bottle opens the species that they are the concentration or the gas or um, whatever contents is there that can be co considered as another gas or liquid. And when it spreads, so basically perfume diffuses into air and that term we call this as a binary diffusion because there are um, only two species. And in fact, there are multiple species, one species can uh, uh, there, there has to be characteristics within this like there, if there are three species A, B, C. So, the species A can diffuse in species B at certain rate, species A can diffuse in species B in certain rate. So, the diffusion uh, coefficient normally decides uh, what rate it will diffuse into other and this term we define is as a binary diffusion. Now, let us say through this diffusion process how much mass is going to diffuse get diffused into other. Okay. Now, if you look at this fixed law it says that mass flux of species A per unit area which is perpendicular to the flow is equal to is consist of two parts one is y a into m a m dot a double dash plus m dot b double dash. So, which means that mass flux of, flux of mixture this is one part into multi multiplied by y a will give you the mass flow of species a associated to bulk flow per unit area. The other part that is what you can say it is minus, minus means it is a negative sign, negative sign tells that when the diffusion has to start from higher concentration to lower concentration and that is not that part you call this as a mass flow of species A associated with molecular diffusion per unit area that is. So, by fixed law that you do the mass balance and there are two parts one part we call this as a uh, bulk uh, mass flow of species A associated to the bulk flow, other part is the mass flow of species A associated with the molecular diffusion. Now, similarly, one can find out the mass flux of species, um, species B as well. So, if you start from B, so all the parameters will be uh, here the mole fraction will be for Y B and diffusion coefficients will be just reverse that is B D B A. So, binary diffusion coefficient will be represented by D B A. So, B A stands for uh, species B diffuses into species A and here also you have to take the mole fraction for uh, species B. Now, if this, if this is your mass balance, so in the absence if there is no uh, if there is no diffusion the second component will be 0 and so in the absence of diffusion we have the mass balance and in the presence of diffusion we we come across with two fluxes and these fluxes are called diffusion fluxes. So, diffusion fluxes m dot a diffusion is equal to rho times d a b into d of y a into d x. Similarly, m dot m dot double dash b diffusion fluxes will be minus rho d b a into d y b by d x. Now, a close look uh, between these two we can say that if you only consider uh, the uh, diffusion fluxes. So, we say that uh, and, and side by side we consider the Fourier law we can say there is a strong resemblance between the heat transfer and the mass transfer through this diffusion pro process. And here the anal and the and d y a by d x is nothing but the concentration gradient and whereas, in the Fourier law d t by d x refers to the temperature gradient and the analogous term uh, that is rho into d b a for 
draw into D basically it is for, for mass transfer and for Fourier law it is the thermal conductivity they have closely resemblance and they are treated to be transport properties because it transfers the information of the parameters in a medium. Now, uh, when you do the closed loop that means, if you make a total mass balance and is uh, for A species A and species B, then you can sum it the together and by summing it a important expression can be and summing it and, and rearranging the term we can say that uh, uh, y a plus y b becomes 1 that is small fraction of a and b that is 1 by, by the fundamental law. So, if this is case and this term will get cancelled and ultimately what we get is rho d a b minus rho d a b d y a by d x minus rho d a b a d y b by d x. So, in other words we write a simplified expression the summation of all diffusion fluxes must be 0. So, the mass transfer uh, analysis says that the overall mass conservations requires the sum of diffusion fluxes should be equal to 0. So, this we call it as a fundamental law and uh, which is governed through Fourier law of diffusions. Now, some of the important information that can be uh, derived here that whatever you discussed so far uh, it is uh, it should be emphasized that the species diffusion is the result of concentration gradient only and when the binary diffusion is considered and this, this is called as ordinary diffusion. But the real mixtures of interest in a combustion contains many components and but the but entire flow physics or entire physics is mainly governed through uh, the concept of binary gas assumptions. Maybe otherwise in a, in a sense that similar concepts can be extended when we have a multi component systems. The gradients of temperature and pressure can produce thermal diffusion and pressure diffusion and one can find the analogy between the Fourier law of heat conduction and fixed law of diffusion uh, through this proportionality constant that is rho d for uh, from the fixed law and k thermal conductivity for Fourier law and they are treated as a transport properties. So, prior to this we you must have aware of thermodynamic properties, fluid properties and now we are through this mass transfer study and heat transfer two properties were introduced that is called as transport properties. So, all what we have uh, discussed today uh, discussed so far is the fixed law of diffusions and they are many a times we also express this fixed law in terms of molar concentrations. So, basically mass is shifted to number of moles and accordingly C, C is introduced. So, we say molar concentration of the mixtures. So, unit of mass was kg per meter cube here we will call it as a kilo mole of the mixture per meter cube. So, similar expressions can be also found out. The next segment that we are going to discuss is the global reactions. So, the overall uh, uh, reaction of 1 mole of fuel with A mole of oxidizer to form B mole of combustion products is expressed by global reaction mechanisms. So, if you look at here we have fuel plus oxidizer gives combustion products. So, to quantify this and all the entire analysis is governed per 1 mole of fuel. But when we say 1 mole of fuel we need to find out the corresponding requirement for oxidizer and corresponding formation of the combustion products. So, here it is A and it is B. And here when the reaction proceeds 
uh, we can define how the concentration of the fuel varies that means mainly for fuel that is called as xf now when the reaction proceeds that means fuel burns out and the concentration of combustion product goes up that means we can say rate of fuel consumption this for this reaction can be expressed by f uh, this equations and that equation we call as a global reaction equations and this equation is in the form of minus kg which is a function of temperature xf to the power n and a concentration of oxidizer to the power m so basically n and m are nothing but your the stoichiometric coefficients and 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 when you say and this m plus n will be defined as the order of reactions so exponent m and a relates the order of reaction for instance the reaction of n th order of the fuel with respect to m th order of oxidizer will have m plus n plus m th order of overall reactions the values of m and a n are not necessarily integers and they are obtained through core fitting techniques and this uh, global reactions uh, is mainly expressed uh, by the uh, parameter which is called as global rate coefficient kgt the uh, finding this coefficient rate coefficient is very vital to know the reaction or kinetics of chemical kinetics of overall systems now uh, when fuel and oxidizer gives the combustion product we really do not know what happens in between so many a times the and 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 when the effectively if you can uh, if you want to study the the physics of formation of this combustion product it is essentially the collision of molecular collision among the fuel fuel and oxidizer particles and through this collision process there are many intermediate species that are formed and once they get settled down we get this combustion products but we are not really worried about uh, what are those intermediate products so many a times go the overall reaction does not give the entire information how the what happens within the reaction uh, period what are the intermediate species that are formed whether there is really a collision or not so all these things so there uh, and there may be some uh, some species which are not seen in the global form but they may have their presence during that intermediate species reactions and they do not in the global reactions so such things has to be analyzed to study and to study this particular parameter which which is called as rate coefficient and this rate coefficient is essentially determined by those um, individual reaction mechanisms so for that reasons we have to study elementary reactions so many times the use of global reactions are considered as a black box approach because they do not provide the intermediate steps or the product formations for example it is a very unrealistic to assume that one mole of fuel collides with a mole of oxidizer simultaneously uh, with single fuel to form b moles of products uh, so this is very unrealistic so a, a possible approach to thought is that there are many sequential processes that occurs in a global reactions which involves many intermediate species and these reactions are called elementary reactions and for elementary reactions the reaction is all order is always an integer so this is another uh, point that need to be emphasized that when you take m and n for uh, global reactions then it not be an integers but when you have when you when you study uh, um, the elementary reactions 
uh, which essentially form this final global reaction, they may have reaction order can have uh, is always an integer. And the collection of all such elementary reactions are necessary to describe the overall reaction and known as reaction mechanisms. So, there are so our study is mainly focused on the kinetics part and this reaction mechanism parts. We will do we will study those things in this model. The reaction mechanisms may involve a few steps as many of maybe there are many um, there may be hundreds of elementary reactions for a give single uh, global reactions. For example, if you say that mixing of hydrogen and oxygen to form water, we can write the global reactions can be uh, 2H2 plus O2 gives you 2H2. But while doing so, we are not really bothered what are the during this formation process what other elementary reactions would have occurred and they are normally do not show up their face in the global reactions. So, uh, such things can be uh, elementary reactions for this could be H2 and O2 when it starts they may initially form HO2 plus H and this H again can mix with O2 to form OH radical and oxygen and this OH again may be can mix with because all these things are simultaneous presence. OH can uh, again react with H, H2 that can form H2O. Now, once the H2O is formed then it does not take part in any of the reactions, but H and O2 plus there may be any other molecule or intermediate species that may have uh, formed. So, they have and while doing so and, and, and these are called as elementary reactions. Okay. So, in this case there are only 4 to 5 elementary reactions for a given one uh, global reactions, but there are certain situations that may be hundreds of elementary reactions for a one global reactions. Now, looking at the elementary reactions they can be uh, unimolecular bimolecular, tertiary molecular or term simply term molecular is used. Uh, so, unim uh, unimolecular reaction involves single species undergoing a rearrangement. So, this word rearrangement is like uh, chemical structure changes or decompositions and we this structural changes we call as isomerization or decompositions and so that they form products and uh, these are reactions of first order at high pressures. So, a unimolecular reaction can be considered that A can give B or A can give B plus C and and they and its rate coefficient is treated as K uni that is rate coefficient for unimolecular reactions. O2 gives O plus O it is a unimolecular reactions. Uh, and the th other last one is term molecular reactions where there are three uh, reactant species, three reactant species and that co and correspond to reverse of unimolecular reactions. That means, if I say the uh, reverse of uh, unimolecular reactions uh, two or more species A plus B plus M gives C plus M. So, this is and the, this is something like a reverse of unimolecular reaction, but except there is a part that is uh, intermediate molecule M which is comes into picture when we have um, term molecular reactions and they are these reactions are of third order. But however, uh, there is an another reaction what you got to call as bimolecular reactions. In fact, most elementary reaction of interest what we have used in the combustions they are bimolecular in nature and that is two molecules collide and react to form different molecules. So, A plus B gives C plus D. So, accordingly rate co coefficients are defined as K B i 
uh, typical example could be H2 plus O2 gives HO2 plus H, H plus O2 gives OH plus O and so on. Okay. Now, once you have uh, decided and once you know this unimolecular, bimolecular and termolecular reactions and we have said that most of the reactions are bimolecular. Um, now, uh, how to quantify this rate coefficients? There are many uh, uh, techniques that are involved uh, uh, through experimental measurements and uh, in particular when you deal with bimolecular reaction and that too in the combustion process. Uh, one of the important empirical form of equation that is um, that essentially governs and in fact it is simple and becomes highly useful that is called as Arrhenius equations. Arrhenius is the name of the scientist. He formulated one empirical uh, equations that essentially governs almost all bimolecular reactions and this will help you to find the or to calculate the rate coefficients. And uh, in fact, uh, it gives although the uh, typically if you find this rate coefficient reactions, people use um, molecular collision theory or kinetic theory of gases to find the rate coefficients, but that becomes a very critical part or may be, uh, may be not scope of for this course rather we will focus on the calculating the rate coefficient uh, to find out the rate coefficient through Arrhenius form of equations. So, what it says is that A plus B gives C plus D and we write concentration of D A by D T is equal to minus K bimolecular concentration of A into B, because A and B uh, order is um, for this reaction order is 2 and this uh, stoichiometric coefficient are also um, 1 and 1. And what it says is that you define this S coefficient in a functional form that is K of which is a, and he claimed that this rate coefficient is mainly a function of temperatures and that is expressed as A t to the power b exponential minus E a by r bar t. So, t is the temperature is known a b and b are capital A and small b are some empirical parameters and he introduced E a which is called as activation energy and of course, we know r bar is the universal gas constant. Uh, so, for example, uh, H plus O 2 gives O H plus O. If you talk this, if you use this Arrhenius equations in the temperature range for 300 to 2500 degree Kelvin, uh, we can find out that this A value is this, B is this, B A is 1.2 in 10 to the power 17, uh, B is minus 0.91, E A is 69.1 kilojoule per gram mole. So, uh, this is one example when data will be given temperature is known to us and activation energy one can find out. Uh, activation energy also uh, um, can be found out from the tabular data. So, the strong advantage for this fact is that uh, we can easily get the rate coefficient through this empirical form. And here we have to use this uh, rate coefficient in a with a unit meter cube per kilo mole into second or gram mole into second. Okay. Now, next component that we are going to discuss uh, is the uh, comparison between rate coefficient and equilibrium constant. So, prior to this we have introduced the term equilibrium constant uh, in our previous model. And here we introduce the term rate coefficients. So, let us see what is the resemblance between these two parameters. So, as you have emphasized that uh, measuring rate coefficients of elementary reaction is a very difficult task and it gives lot of uncertainty. So, one way is to find out the equilibrium constants. 
So, people used to find equilibrium constant like we did uh, whether the mixture is lean or rich through this uh, um, equilibrium constant because they are thermodynamic estimates and more precise in many cases because it is very easy to measure the concentration of species or molar mass or actual mass of the species. Uh, uh, so, uh, by knowing this and try to correlate if there is if it has it if there is a link between the equilibrium constant and red coefficient. By doing so, we find there is a definite link and that gives a that will take as an um, advantage to correlate these two in uh, parameters. So, that is the essential feature of this chemical kinetics. So, and this chemical kinetics equations can be solved uh, at equilibrium recognizing equal forward and backward reactions. Now, to do this we consider a case for a forward and reverse reactions in a arbitrary biomolecular situation. Uh, we say A plus B gives C plus D and we can imagine that reaction can proceed as well forward direction and backward directions. Like this again happens in many uh, biomolecular reactions, reactants uh, concentration of one uh, is a dominant form, concent sometimes concentration of a C is dominant. So, the reaction can proceed in either directions. To justify this fact, we, we have to find out uh, what is the I mean um, in what way the reaction should proceed. Uh, so, for example, if, um, uh, that means like formation of water, we have seen that many intermediate species are formed. Now, when they form, uh, whether those reactions can be in a forward direction or backward direction, that is governed through the rate coefficients. So, for that, what you introduce is that when you while calculating concentration of uh, A with respect to T, we introduced if the reaction has to happen in a forward direction, we say it is a forward rate coefficient K f and that is negative. Now, when the reaction has to do in the backward direction, uh, the concentration of C and D becomes dominance. So, we, we define this uh, rate coefficient as K r and it has to be positive. So, at equilibrium both uh, concentration is 0. So, at when you look at the equilibrium concentration both equal to 0. So, what we can say that ratio of forward rate coefficient and uh, reverse uh, rate coefficient uh, which is a function of concentration uh, number. This concentration numbers uh, can be easily measured and that number we have already told that that is K c or we say concentration uh, uh, equilibrium constant based on concentration. Now, same expression we look at in a different way. So, we say K c is your equi equilibrium uh, concentration uh, and, but when you define this equilibrium constant K p, it is uh, expressed in the form of partial pressures. So, equilibrium constant when it is uh, things like there one way we find the concentration other way we find this in terms of its partial pressure for each species concentration for C, D, A and B and they have uh, raised to the stoichiometric coefficient when, for their reaction. Now, uh, when I say C and D, I mean they are equal because when the stoichiometric coefficients are equal, then it takes the form of K p in this form. So, when I say this, so K p becomes K c. So, uh, the when the stoichiometric coefficients becomes 1, we say K c is equal to K p. So, this gives the information that K p by if you have a provision to find out the K p, then we can uh, find out control the ratio of forward rate coefficient and reverse rate coefficients and which are mainly function of temperatures. 
So, uh, the ratio of forward and reverse rate coefficient is equal to equilibrium constant based on the concentration and the equilibrium constant k p also can be expressed in terms of partial pressures. So, it has been seen that in bimolecular reactions uh, both are equal which means it is possible to compute reverse reaction rate from the knowledge of forward rate and the equilibrium constant for the reaction. Conversely, one can calculate the forward rate by knowing the reverse rate. In other words, we can say the chemical kinetic study can provide accurate experimental rate coefficients over a wide range of temperatures. So, this is uh, and, and these two things will govern uh, rate coefficient and equilibrium constant will govern all the uh, parameters uh, during a uh, during all the elementary reactions. So, with this uh, I come to the end of this lecture, but before you leave we will try to solve some numerical problems based on the fundamental concept discussed in this lecture. So, the first problem is based on Fick's law of diffusion. We says that we have a, a closed container which consists of uh, uh, CO2 and it is 4 liter capacity and it is sealed with a rubber plug on the top and this has some thickness of uh, 10 mm and its diameter is 20 mm. So, this is what we say rubber plug. Uh, this CO2 is kept at 25 degree and 5 atmosphere pressure. So, 5 atmosphere pressure means very high pressure as well that means CO2 is in a compressed CO2 has been kept at very high pressure. What uh, the question is that we have to find uh, what is the mass loss. So, here the mass loss is basically the leak that we are going to calculate and when you say leak uh, you have entire thing CO2 here and rest of the when, the, when uh, that means CO2 is going to diffuse into into the other medium and other medium we say if it is air uh, that means we have need to find out the binary coefficient of CO2 with respect to air. So, if it is going to diffuse what we are going to uh, what I mean we need to quantify what is the mass loss. So, data that is given is that uh, rho uh, density at uh, rho CO2 that is at 5 atmosphere it is given 8.9 kg per meter cube. Uh, so, let us recall uh, the expressions for uh, uh, rate of mass loss. So, we can say m dot diffusion that can be written as d a b into area into concentration difference rho a 1 minus rho a 2 divided by t d x d y by d x. So, here we have to find this the leak through this thickness. So, uh, we can say rho a 2 which we can assume to be 0 because it is low concentration and low concentration and that concentration has to be calculated with respect to air and rho a 1 you can write in terms of density its density you can write it is very high 9.9 kg per meter cube and thickness is 
10 mm that is 0 0.01 meter diameter 20 mm that is 0 0.02 meter so and dab is given that 1.1 into 10 to the power minus 10 meter square per second and remember the always the unit of binary diffusion coefficient is meter square per second because it is a transport properties. Uh, then uh, we can calculate this value uh, like 1.1 into 10 to the power minus 10 area we can say pi by 4 d square that is 0 0.02 square uh, rho a 1 it is 8.9 minus 0 thickness is 0 0.01. So, this number you will calculate diffusion is very negligible that is 3 into 10 to the power minus 11 kg per second hardly there is any leak or if you can calculate that means if you are storing this vessel for years what is it be effective. So, this number would be about 0 0.946 into 10 to the power minus 3 kg per year that means if you want to calculate this kg change this uh, kg per second to kg per year we can say this just to give a realistic number this is about 0.95 grams of per year. So, diffusion of uh, or mass loss from the vessel is almost negligible through this diffusion process and that also we said or uh, very rightly the molecular diffusion process is a very slow process and this problem demonstrates the same concept. But in some sense uh, if you want to find the concentration of CO2 and uh, the, diff the loss mass loss in some situations this uh, may be if it is a very costly gas or a costly gas like which needs to be carried or need to be kept for um, long time then uh, this loss can be a very vital task. For example, when you carry a liquid oxygen in a satellite to higher altitude or higher space or deep space. So, we expect there should not be any loss because the importance of oxygen is realized as a combustion process during the, um, the, the during combustion process in the deep space where availability of oxygen is not there. So, in a such scenario this loss has to be judiciously taken has to be taken into account. So, next problem we are going to discuss in terms of uh, the rate coefficient versus equilibrium constants. So, we consider a bimolecular reaction NO plus O gives N plus O2. The rate coefficient in the forward directions is expressed as a function of temperature and equilibrium constant also is given in the form of Gibbs function. So, we need to find out the reverse rate coefficients. So, the solution of this problem we have to recall the uh, we have to see that when I say N O plus O gives N plus O 2 and we say in the forward directions it is K F and in the reverse direction it is K R that is um, rate coefficient what is given is k f and what is not known is k r we need to find out and uh, but this k r to be found out we have to use the k p and temperature is given as 2 3 
0 0 Kelvin. So, the first step that we need to find out what is K p. So, K p can be calculated as E x p delta g g uh, gives function molar gives function by r bar t minus sign is there. And we need data for this gives function calculation. Now, this delta g gives function formation t we can for this reaction we can write gives function of formation uh, for nitrogen plus gives function of formation for O2 minus gives function of formation uh, for NO minus gives function of formation uh, for O. Now, here it is a stable gas this number will be 0 and these 3 data is required. So, you have to take the data from thermodynamics books and this number I can write as uh, for nitrogen it is 326331 kilo joule per kilo mole. For oxygen uh, for NO this number is 61243 kilo joule per kilo mole. For oxygen see you have to use this word oxygen for 0 because it is a stable gas oxygen is not atom is not a stable gas. So, we have to find its Gibbs function this number is 101627 kilo joule per kilo mole. So, by inserting this value and we have r bar is equal to 8.315 kilo joule per kg mole Kelvin. Then by inserting this value we say delta g uh, gives function change is uh, 163461 kilo joule per kilo mole. So, once you know this we can find so this will give you K p by inserting this number is 1.94 into 10 to the power minus 4 and it is unitless it is unitless because it is the ratio of partial pressures. So, once you have K p then we can recall that K f forward by K a reverse which is a function of temperature is nothing but K p and we are given with K forward reactions which is a function of temperature that is 3.8 into 10 to the power 9 T into uh, T uh, into minus 20820 by T. So, this number by at T is equal to 2300 0 Kelvin implies K F T is equal to 1.024 into 10 to the power 9 centimeter cube per gram mole second. So, once you know this using these equations this will give you K R that is reverse reaction this number would be 5.3 into 10 to the power 12 centimeter cube by gram mole into seconds. So, this expression demonstrate that knowing the equilibrium constant and rate coefficient in the forward directions one can calculate the rate coefficient for the reverse directions. So, with this I conclude thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.